What is up, people of the world? My name is Simi Joe. I make videos about computers on the internet, or we'll say Ryzen computers, because it's been a whole lot of that lately. Jeez, but it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I would like to get my hands on some Intel stuff, though. So, Intel, send me all the chips. No. Anyways. Uh, and then Threadripper's gonna show up. <laughs> I have 1950X pre-ordered. Gonna come to my door. Got a bunch of stuff on the works for that, for memory sponsors and uh, things like that, and power supplies, and hopefully it all works out. But in the meantime, 1500X from the other day, uh, in the pumpkin computer, <laughs> the atomic orange computer, uh, I have another set of uh, 1500 and the Azeroth Fatality motherboard. We're gonna see just how far she overclocks and what uh, you can expect if you have a 1500X 4-core 8-thread chip. So cue the intro. We're gonna talk all about it. Okay, so uh, I have this on my test bench. That's the ghettoest test bench ever, I know. Uh, but it's got a uh, little Noctua uh, NH9 uh, on it. Uh, it's like got the two uh, little fans. Probably kind of cooler to put on a micro ATX board, an ITX board, I should say, like this. It's got the Azrock Fatality X370 uh, ITX board, which is a weird choice, X370 on that little platform. But it's pretty cool, pretty cool. And then, uh, you know, for no, no reason whatsoever, we got uh, a GTX 1050, because you need a graphics card, and uh, 16 gigs of Giel Ryzen branded memory at 266. 266, so 2666. So let's fire on over. Boosh. To the BIOS. To the BIOS. Oh, there we go. This is the BIOS of the ASRock board. And I have it jacked to the ever living, uh, you know, shouldn't run 24 7 scenario. Uh, but uh, if we look here, we've got it at manual uh, at 4.1 gigahertz. And I was able to, uh, I've already confirmed this, this works, or I hope it's gonna work on camera. I certainly hope it's gonna work on camera. Running at 1.475 volts, that's too many volts. Shouldn't be over like 4.4, well, 1 uh, so you should stop at 1.4 unless you have really good cooling. The cooler I have on here is actually doing a pretty damn good job, I will say, but uh, this is like, you know, outside of the realm of you should be running all the time, that's for sure. Our XMP profile is set to 2666. I might play with that a little bit later in the video just to see if I can go any higher because that is what the memory is rated for. And um, yeah, this is, uh, I got uh, the fan profile here in hardware monitor uh, set to full speed. And the, this little extra fan I got here is set to uh, performance mode. So yeah, this worked yesterday. So let's go ahead and uh, you know discard, cha oh, save changes and exit, whatever. And we'll load into Windows and uh, show you. See if we can get this to run stably, and then I will clock it back to where you probably should be if you're running this 24/7 and you have a good cooler. So my experience with uh, the eight core Ryzen's is that near the bleeding edge there, uh, you, you really get hot and you get like into 70, 80 degrees on the package. And with this thing, it's been pretty dang good. Uh, it doesn't even get near like 60, 65 before I start running into trouble. So it's definitely a power delivery issue. But uh, I don't know if you can see in here, we got 43 on the package. Uh, and this will actually, once the computer levels off, get down to a, about, uh, like under under like around ambient 28 degrees it's not bad but my whole point of this is that i want to run cinebench on camera at 4.1 gigahertz all my processes are killed 34 32 30 31 29 so i waited till we had a core temperature or package temperature of under 30 degrees and I'm running this uh, just kind of, you know, just to prove it can it can happen. But I'm expecting it to just go. So this is pretty. Uh, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Do 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 do. 1500x. I would say is a pretty damn good CPU unless you're doing streaming uh, or you know whatever. As a gaming racket, this processor is perfect. It's equivalent to a Core i7 from the last couple of years ago. Uh, you know, but a Core i7 from like the last two years can definitely hit like near five gigahertz where this is stuck at four-ish. So the instructions per clock are a little bit less. 
uh, you know, where you could get over a thousand in Cinebench on a current i7 Gen CPU. We're hitting 916 when we have this thing turboed out. So it, it did it. Isn't that awesome? And let's see. Highest package temperature, 69 degrees, which is very, very good. Uh, doing something like this on my uh, Ryzen 1700 would we be in the 80s for sure. So getting some of those cores out of there uh, really helps with temperature. So you can overclock you know, to the bleeding edge on a, uh, a four core, maybe the 1600, a little bit easier for sure. So let's go ahead and uh, put this to a reasonable overclock. So I would definitely uh, say four gigahertz is totally possible. And because I'm a curmud curmudgeon, I'm gonna do that. That's 1.4 volts. Uh, that's the, the pretty much the maximum you'd wanna be hitting uh, in one of these. And then, you know, we shouldn't have to have our full, our fan speed on full. Performance mode sounds good. Performance mode sounds good. And we'll go ahead and save and Make sure we can get a Cinebench run that way and we'll compare and see if it's really even worth it to push your chip to the brink of, uh, of breaking. We're almost hitting 900 in Cinebench at 4 gigahertz, so that is pretty damn good, I would say. And you could rock this all day long, for, for sure. Um, you could run this 100 times and it's not going to... Uh, you know, you have to make sure you have some good airflow, but you could run this a hundred times and it'll, it sh should run uh, IDA 64, uh, benchmark continuously. Uh, so yeah, if you grab 1500 X, you wouldn't be, uh, dis disappointed. That's for sure. Another thing I wanted to do quickly is, uh, see, we're almost hitting 900, uh, at four gigahertz. So there's no reason to go to 4.1 cause all, all it was getting was 15 points, you know, 20 points and uh, you're running at way too high a voltage. But let's just see if we can overclock our memory. Do, 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 29, 33. Save changes and exit. I'm expecting this not to post. Something's happening. Let's see if we can hit that 900 uh, with this overclocked RAM. Oh man, we're so damn close. One more time, will we do it with hardware monitor closed? I have a feeling it's going to. Can we hit 900 at 4 gigahertz on the 1500X with 2933 megahertz overclocked memory? Well, I think we'll get the answer right about now. Oh, 904. You couldn't even see me coming. I'm Timmy Joe at Watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter, and uh, 904. On a 1500X, that's a pretty freaking amazing score. So, you know what? This is like the, the best deal of the century on a CPU. You might want to go 1400, but you know what? For that extra little bit, you get a better cooler out of the box and pretty much some damn guaranteed overclockability. So, uh, get your 4 gigahertz on your 1500X and you'll be quite surprised at the boost in performance. It's, it's about 20%. Uh, it's pretty good, 15%, and uh, 904 Cinebench score. Pretty awesome. I'm out watching me join Instagram, Twitter. I'll see you guys in another video, and I really do appreciate you watching this. 904 on a 1500X. That's pretty impressive. See you guys later.